All right, so I'm sure you woke up this morning saying to yourself, gosh, I just went on the physics website and there aren't any vodcasts for me to watch this week. And I, I know that that's a source of great disappointment to you, and I don't want to leave you empty-handed. So I have a new vodcast right here of me doing physics problems. <laughs> Yay! Okay, JK. All right, so um, let's actually talk about, very briefly, what we did um, in the last class, which was we talked about these graphs. Right, and they had different, so for example, we had the position of something that's moving forward um, and gaining speed, and uh, then we have the velocity of that same object starting at rest and gaining um, more and more positive velocity. And of course, the acceleration is a function of time, uh, just is a flat line like this. And of course, what we did was we went back into our buggy lab and one of the earlier lectures of the year. And remember that, hey, whenever we have a linear graph, uh, what we can actually say is, uh, if we have any kind of linear graph, let me just kind of recopy it here, okay? Uh, what we can say is the basic equation, which is y equals mx plus b. And of course, the question then becomes, how do we apply that idea to this velocity graph over here, how do we do that? And so what we're going to do is basically kind of substitute some terms in here to come up with a new equation, just like we did with the buggy lab. Now this is not going to be a position equation because we're dealing with a velocity graph. We see that the y-axis is velocity. We see that the uh, x-axis, well, that's still time, but now we've got a couple things that change. First of all, on the y-intercept, well, that's the velocity uh, when the x value is zero, and x here is the time axis, so that's the velocity when when um, time is zero, so that's what we call the initial velocity, that's the velocity we start at. And then finally, the slope, well, what are we calculating with the slope here when we're talking about a velocity graph? What we're talking about is how does the velocity change as a function of time? Like, what's the rate at which the velocity changes in time? We have a word for that, and it's called acceleration. So this is the graph that we're going to use. Okay. Um, so for question number one, I know we did it in class, but I just want to kind of review. The way we're going to solve these problems, let's first of all talk about some naming conventions. So we read question number one. This is clearly dated, so if your parents are watching this video with you, um, they're going to wonder like when I dug this worksheet up from. Um, you can ask them what a Yugo is, and they'll have plenty of hilarious stories to tell you. Um, <clears throat> so we have a poorly tuned Yugo, and it can accelerate from rest to speed of 28 meters per second in 20 seconds. So let's label some letters first. And this is how we're going to do every problem. We're just going to label the numbers in the problem. So we go from rest. From rest, that means you write that as the initial velocity is zero. And we're going to achieve this final velocity of 28 meters per second, and we're going to do it in 20 seconds. So for part A, let's just go ahead and um, use this V equals AT equals V naught. So we'll actually use that formula. Sorry, one color V equals AT plus V naught. And let's plug in our numbers and get what we get. So we get that we go to 28 meters per second um, in a time of 20 seconds, and V naught is rest, so that's zero. So then um, we can actually say that's A times 20 plus zero. So now let's do a little bit of algebra and solve. Now here's the part where you need to do the algebra. Okay, so you might want to pause the video and double check. And the answer that you're going to get is A is 1.4 meters per second squared. So that's part A. Now for part B, we're going to actually uh, do a calculation here. And I'm going to show you this new idea. And the new idea is this. To get the displacement, which is delta x, take the area under the velocity curve. So we're going to actually go ahead and do that right now. So we want to, what we're going to do is let's just get the uh, velocity graph right now from this data here, this thing that we solved here. So we remember that we have v equals at plus v naught, 
And now for v, that's, that's just our variable for velocity. And we have an acceleration of 1.4 times the time, we leave that as t, plus our y-intercept, which is zero. So when we want to write down the equation for the velocity of an object like this, we plug in for a, and we plug in for v-naught for the slope and the y-intercept. So now we just plot this. And what we realize is we get to a velocity of 28 meters per second, and we do it in a time of 20 seconds. Now, this is the thing that we're going to do with this calculation today. What I want to show you is what is it that you actually need to be able to do on the exam. What we're not going to address in this video is why the heck would this work? We're going to do that a little bit later on. So for today, this is just plain old, what do I need to know how to do to get the exam done? Okay, why this works is not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a few more things related to your exam, and then we're going to actually come up with an explanation. But for now, just do the calculation. And it says to get the displacement, we're going to take the area under the velocity curve. So here's our velocity curve. Now let me just drop a perpendicular here to help us calculate the area. So when I say area, what I see here is a triangle. So my area for a triangle is going to be 1 half base times height. And what I'm claiming here is to get this displacement, we're actually going to calculate the area of this triangle. So the base here is 20, and the height here is 28. And so my area is going to be 1 half times the base, which is 20, times the height, which is 28. And I end up getting, when I do this math, 280 meters. So what that means is my displacement here is going to be 280 meters from my calculation. So that's really the basic idea for this. Okay. Now, for question number two, uh, what we're going to do is uh, just go ahead and do the same thing. So it says at t equals zero, a car has a speed of 30 meters per second. Um, and I just want to remind you right here, this really is a long-winded way of saying v naught is 30 meters per second. So it's really tempting to say, oh, do I need to plug t equals zero into some formula? No, do not plug t equals zero into a formula. The whole point of this is that we are talking about what the initial velocity of the car is, and it's 30. Uh, the time that we will use is six, and the speed here, well, that's the speed that it ends up at. So that's v final is 14 meters per second. So now we're gonna get the acceleration and then what we're also going to do is get the displacement. So we'll do part A to get the acceleration. And for part B, we'll actually calculate the displacement. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I have uh, for part A, V equals AT plus V naught. And we're going to plug in our numbers. So we're going to have 14 is what we end up at equals A times T, which um, is going to be 6 plus V naught, which is 30. So when we get A, it's going to end up being negative eight-thirds, or if you don't like that, you can write it as negative 2.67. Either way, though, make sure you have the units as meters per second squared. So now, let's go ahead and get the displacement. To do that, once again, let's actually write down the equation for the velocity. So we know that v equals at plus v naught. So the velocity equation, v is what we, uh, is our variable for velocity, t is the time, now we have a slope of negative, um, you can write 8 thirds, I would be fine with that, times, you know, so I'm just using, using negative 8 thirds, negative 8 thirds t, plus my initial, and when I actually look, the initial velocity was given as um, 30. So let's go ahead and plot that. So we start off at 30, and we end up at 14, and we get to that point in, uh, in six seconds. So now let's go ahead, so we go from here, 14. We draw this straight line. It's supposed to be a straight line, obviously it didn't work out, but whatever. And so now, what we're gonna do is to get the displacement, we're still gonna use this idea of area, but now look at this. I have here a triangle and a rectangle. So my area is going to be the triangle area plus the rectangle area. So the rectangle, let's just uh, get that here, that goes from 0 to 14, 
and this is from 0 to 6, and that's 14. So when we actually get the rectangle area, that's going to be 14 times 6. And for the triangle, let's be careful here, the height of this triangle is 30 minus 14. So the height ends up being 16. So we have 16 times 6 times a half. So when we actually end up getting this answer, that's going to end up being 48 plus 84, and that ends up being 132 meters. Excellent. So that's it for that one. So for this one, again, let's just get the answer. Delta x is 132 meters.